Today's spoiler video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. Use the link below to pre-order your cards today. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another daily dose of Guilds of Ravnica spoilers. And we're getting near the end of Guilds of Ravnica spoiler season. Actually, I believe the full set is supposed to be out tomorrow, but we have a ton of cards to talk about today. One mythic, a bunch of rares, some lower rarity stuff. So we're going to jump right into it, starting with a special card, our exclusive MTG Goldfish preview card. Experimental Frenzy. So I'm not going to go on too long about Experimental Frenzy. If you want a full breakdown, I wrote an article about it over on the site. I will link it down in the description box. But basically, Experimental Frenzy is a really wacky enchantment. Four mana, you can look at the top card of your library. You can play the top card of your library, but you can't play cards from your hand. However, if you end up blocking yourself and need to play cards from your hand again, you can pay four to destroy Experimental Frenzy. Plus, awesome flavor text. Turns out that coffee is the weird ant of invention and never have truer flavor text words been written i know from experience coffee it does make things happen anyway this is basically like a weird red version of future sight it plays very similarly you play it you can play a bunch of cards off the top of your deck it's also a little bit similar to like a precognition field with a different drawback precognition field same mana cost but it requires you to only play instants or sorceries experimental frenzy lets you play anything but you can't play cards from your hand so the challenge with Experimental Frenzy is it can be a massive boost of card advantage, but once you hit two lands in a row, that's where the chain kind of fizzles because you can like play a card, play a card, hit a land, play that land, but when you hit two lands, then you can't play another land for your turn, the fun stops. So it is kind of high variance. There's not really a good way of getting around that other than trying to like manipulate the top of your deck. So I think in standard, the easiest home for Experimental Frenzy is some sort of aggro deck where you just like to curve out, dump your entire hand so the not playing cards from your hand drawback isn't really a big deal. And then you hope that Experimental Frenzy will draw you multiple cards a turn. Like maybe you have a bunch of non-lands on top of your deck in a row. You just play two or three cards a turn, pull ahead that direction. And then after you draw a few cards for your turn, which you can't cast, then you can always spend your turn destroying Experimental Frenzy. You probably can dump your hand again and then play another Experimental Frenzy to start it over. So kind of a way to go long in aggro deck also works really well with ways to manipulate the top of your deck. We don't have too many of those in standard. The big one is Surveil, like something like Doom Whisperer. If you have an Experimental Frenzy out, you get the second land on top of your deck. You can just Surveil it into your graveyard, put something you can cast on top. So there's kind of some synergies there that allow you to keep going deeper and deeper with Experimental Frenzy. In older formats, you can do some really janky fun things with like Shared Fate, for example, Possessed Portal, Zor's Weirding, ways to kind of work around the drawback of not being able to play cards from your hand like with shared fate you make it so your opponent's playing cards from the top of your deck and they're playing for exile you're playing cards from the top of their deck however if you have experimental frenzy you can still play cards from your deck even through shared fate because you're not actually drawing them and you're able to just kind of play until you get to a land so when your opponent draws their card quote unquote for the turn they're going to be drawing that land off the top of your deck so they're not getting anything useful so it's kind of a two card combo there possess portal doesn't let anyone draw cards so what's the downside you can still play cards with experimental frenzy that you're not drawing your opponent can't Zer's weirdy you can also manipulate that so there's some really fun sweet casual things you can do with experimental frenzy i could see it see play at standard i don't know it is a weird card to figure out the other way to build around it if you're playing like commander or even in casual modern decks fetch lands super good because they just let you change the top card of your library plus they thin a land out of your deck ways to play additional lands like oracle of moldiah azusa lost but seeking those are super helpful because instead of fizzling your card advantage on the second land it'll be the third land or the fourth land or the fifth land so keep those in mind if you're building around it in casual play so a super sweet super unique card i will be excited to see if anyone figures it out i think it will at least be good in casual decks when you build around it could show up in standard as well definitely has some against the odds potential so thanks again to wizards for a super sweet spoiler and if you want to read more about it check out the link down below to the article over on the website. Next on our list, we have our one mythic for the day. 
Mnemonic Betrayal. And this card is crazy. Three mana, you exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. You can cast those cards this turn. You can spend your mana as though it was mana of any color to cast those spells. And at the beginning of the next end step, any cards that are still in exile go back to your opponent's graveyards. And then you get to exile Mnemonic Betrayal. So this is kind of a reverse version of Yawgmoth's Will, combined with like Villainous Wealth because you're stealing your opponent's stuff from the graveyard rather than their library and this is one of the most spicy unique cards i expect this will be extremely popular for casual play as far as seeing play in standard there's upside and downside the upside is there's a lot of graveyard mechanics actually three of the five guilds and guilds of ravnica have mechanics built around the graveyard you have dream eater showing off surveil and demir you have golgari playing undergrowth you have jumpstart and quasi duplicate so people are going to be stocking their graveyards with cards so mnemonic but trail probably going to have something you can get the downside is in standard if you're playing three mana for this and you want to cast a dream eater from your opponent's graveyard you're kind of paying nine mana for a dream eater so i think this is a card that gets much better in older formats in older formats where people are brainstorming and preordaining and black lotusing you can play this steal your opponent's black lotus make a bunch of mana brainstorm ponder kind of like storm off from their graveyard so i'm not sure if this will see much play in standard i think it just might be a little too janky maybe it could be great graveyard hate it definitely has some weird potential in older formats it also suffers from what i would call the villainous wealth problem which is basically you can't control what your opponent's playing so stealing your opponent's cards you're kind of at the whim of their deck and if your opponent's playing a lot of bad underpowered cards or cards that don't really work with the theme of your deck you're not really getting much value although mnemonic betrayal much much cheaper to get started compared to villainous wealth so i think this one probably has some weird eternal applications that I'm not the right person to talk about. I don't play enough vintage to really know. Maybe it could be a weird sideboard card in standard, although I'm not super high on it, but it will be a casual all-star where you just make tons of mana in commander, maybe mill your opponent a little bit, or just trust that people are putting cards in their graveyard and cast like 20 things from your opponent's graveyard in one turn with mnemonic betrayal and essentially just win the game on the spot. So casual all-star, standard maybe, vintage, as the vintage players, probably does something thing there with black lotuses but a super sweet mythic nonetheless next on our list we have citywide bust which is a new kind of interesting sweeper effect so three mana destroy all creatures with toughness four or greater so this is kind of a reverse version of retribution of the meek which destroys all creatures with power four or greater and i think this is a really interesting take on a wrath if you are playing some sort of aggro deck it actually seems like a really good sideboard option getting rid of like steel leaf champions carnage tyrants lyras there's some decks that are going to be playing primarily creatures with at least four toughness and if you are playing a bunch of cheap aggressive creatures like boros aggro or a Selesnia based token deck making lots of 1-1s, maybe pumping them to 2-2s, two you basically have a one-sided wrath for only 3 mana. So, Citywide Bust is a card that I think is very powerful, but it is not a wrath that you just play in any deck. Your control deck probably doesn't want to play this maybe it plays it in the sideboard but it's not a fumigate it's not a damnation or wrath of god it's a card that is at its best as a wrath in an aggro deck where you can break the symmetry by playing low toughness cheap aggressive creatures and blow out your opponent's blockers looking to stop your game plan so i think it's a card that's very powerful but it's also narrow and only good in certain decks which is probably where you want the power level to be for a three mana sweeper effect so a card that I think probably will see play in standard, but it really depends on the metagame, depends on the deck you're playing, and what threats are popular in the format. Next on our list, we have Atera the Silencer, which is one of the more unique cards we've had in a long time. So, four mana Demir Colors, Legendary Vampire Assassin, you get a 3-5 this unblockable, and then when it deals combat damage to a player, you exile target creature that player controls and put a hit counter on that card. So the exiled card gets a hit counter. Then that player loses a game if they own three or more exiled card with hit counters on them. However, you have to shuffle a Terra into its owner's library. So basically, this is sort of like a weird mixture of a hostage taker slash Feroska's Contempt 
effect. You play this for four mana, the next turn you attack, exile your opponent's best creature, and you're not hostage taker exiling it, where if your opponent kills hostage taker, you get it back. It is Veraska's Contempt exiled, gone forever, which is a pretty good value on its own. But then you have to deal with the drawback of shuffling it into your library. So you can't just play this on turn four, attack for the next three turns, exile three creatures, and win the game. So it's going to be interesting to see how good this is. I mean, four mana exile-based removal isn't that bad. Although, a Terra does come with the downside of being a creature. So if your opponent kills it, you don't just get a removal spell right away like Faraska's Contempt. In standard, there are some ways to find it again if you really want to go all in like a Terra against the odds. Forerunner of the Legion right on curve to tutor it up. Mausoleum Secrets, get some creatures in your graveyard. A Terra is a black card. Mastermind's Acquisition could even grab it from the sideboard. So you could build a deck around the effect. It would depend on your opponent having creatures, but hey, we're talking standard. Everyone's winning with creatures for the most part, or most decks are anyway. So we'll see. I'm not 100% sure how good this card is. I really have no idea, but it seems like a really fun card to build around and against the odd style deck. And if you're playing in Commander, or in casual modern, you got stuff like Steronic Resonator to double up the trigger. If you got two Steronic Resonators, you attack with a Terra, then you double up the exile trigger, get rid of two creatures, and just make someone lose the game on the attack, assuming your opponent has three creatures. So a really cool, really unique, really flavorful card, sneaking in, killing something, going away, coming back again later, perhaps, as an assassin. So I love the flavor. I'm not sure about the power level, but I expect we will be playing in a Terra deck at some point because it's just such a cool way to try to win the game next on our list we have charnel troll and this card has pretty impressive stats three mana you get a four four trample and at the beginning of your upkeep you exile a creature from your graveyard if you do you put a counter on charnel troll making it a five five for three on your next turn otherwise you got to sacrifice it and then you can pay two and discard a creature to put another counter on it so this is a loxodon smiter right off the bat with the upside of having trample that grows throughout the course of the game. That is a legit card. Loxodon Spider was great in standard. It was great in modern in some decks as well. Like the stats, 4-4 four, four for 3 is solid. And Charnel Troll has some upside over that. So I think this mostly fits in some sort of like Golgari aggro deck. Because of the drawback of having to have a creature in your graveyard, you can't just play this on turn 3 with an empty graveyard because you're going to lose your troll. However, if you're playing like Stitcher Supplier on one and do Glow Spore Shaman on turn two, milling a bunch of cards, getting some creatures in your graveyard, Charnel Troll is an insane three drop. It's going to get so big and be a must answer trampling threat really, really quickly. Plus, you could use it as a discard outlet as well. And then you have stuff on the top end like Doom Whisperer, which, yes, it's not technically a Golgari card, but surveilling a ton of creatures into your graveyard works really well with the troll as well. The only downside here is we are entering a standard where everyone is playing graveyard-based stuff. At least a lot of decks. Three of the five guild mechanics are at least somewhat graveyard-based, which means there probably will be an upswing in Sentinel Totems, in Silent Gravestones, in Dead Eye Trackers, ways to deal with graveyards just because so many of the Guilds of Ravnica mechanics are based around it. And if you are on the Charnel Troll plan and your opponent can wipe your graveyard with a Sentinel Totem or eat your creatures with a Dead Eye Tracker, you're not only losing your graveyard and your undergrowth cards and all the synergies you're built around, but you're going to lose your troll as well when you don't have a creature to exile from your graveyard. So there is some risk involved, but I think the stats on this card, in the right deck where you're stocking your graveyard and being aggressive with Golgari stuff, the stats are good enough that I think it probably will be worth the risk, because a 4-4 four, four for 3 is great, trample is great, it grows throughout the game, so even though you will get blown out on occasion, the upside of killing your opponent really quickly with an above-the-curve threat more than makes up for that risk, I think, unless we see Graveyard Hate become incredibly heavily played in Standard. Next on our list, we have... Meh. Kind of a bulk rare. Light of the Legion. This reminds me of the old intro pack rare. Six mana, five, five angel with flying and mentor. When it dies, you get a plus one, plus one counter on each white creature you control. It's just too much mana. When you're getting up to six mana in standard, you want something that's going to do something right away. If you play this and it gets hit by Veraska's Contempt or a seal away or something, you just kind of lost yourself the game for the most point. So I think it'll be not impactful enough, especially since if you want a similar effect, we have Venerated Loxodon 
Gun, which is going to come down for one mana, two mana, maybe not put counters on everything, but on most of your team. So it feels like Venerated Loxodon is just a more competitive version of a very similar effect. So I would expect that Light of Legion... I don't know, maybe a casual angel deck would like it, but I don't think it'll see any play at all in standard. Speaking of cards that I'm not really sure we'll see any play at all in standard, we have Risk Factor. So three mana, instant speed with jumpstart. So you can cast it from your graveyard as well. Target opponent may have Risk Factor deal four damage to them. If that player doesn't, then you get to draw three cards. So this is Browbeat, almost exactly Browbeat, except it also has jumpstart, one last damage. And this is a card that it's just not very good. One thing that you will learn as you play Magic is cards that give your opponent the choice are always significantly worse than they look. When you look at Risk Factor and you think, okay, four damage for three, that's pretty good. Three cards for three, that's also very good. No matter what happens, I'm going to be happy, but that's not exactly true. Because if your opponent's at 20 life, they're like, sure, hit me for four, what do I really care? And you just wasted a card. But if your opponent's about dead, then they'll let you draw the cards. So it's a card that is very tricky to actually make work in standard. While it does represent potentially eight damage for six mana with one card, which isn't bad, or six cards, most of the time you're going to get the worst mixture of that. And we've seen similar cards, like Sword Point Diplomacy, which can be a massive 9 damage for 3 mana, not really catch on in Standard. It's just a very hard effect to make work. So maybe I'm missing something with this card. Maybe the Jumpstart makes it way better than it looks. But my guess would be that this will be a fun, casual, gotcha type card that people can play in their Make Your Opponent Choose type decks. But I don't really expect it to show up in Standard. We also got confirmation of Gruesome menagerie which is actually a card that leaked a long time ago the first guilds of ravnica card basically for five mana you get to reanimate a card that is converted mana cost one two and three which is a pretty good amount of value that could be a card that shows up in the golgari deck we're talking about with stitcher spire ghost press shaman charnel troll for five mana you get back one of each of those which is actually a pretty good amount of mana you're getting back six mana worth of creatures for only five mana although of course you you still have to deal with the risk of graveyard hate being a blowout there might be some combo potential in the modern format maybe there is a combination of one mana two mana three mana things that if you get them back you just win the game immediately uh visera seer mirror retriever scrap trawler visera seer anafenza kitchen finks there are some ways you can build a deck where you can just set up an infinite combo from your graveyard although like we were talking about with some of our other graveyard cards you're still dealing with graveyard hate in modern graveyard hate is everywhere in standard graveyard hate will likely be on an upswing so while the best case for gruesome menagerie is a lot of value in standard or maybe even an i win the game combo in modern the worst case is going to be your opponent has graveyard hate and your five mana play does absolutely nothing so it really depends on the beta game how much people are playing graveyard hate so we'll have to wait and see but the rate is not bad three creatures for five mana even of low converted mana cost is a pretty good deal and bonus points if you can just set up an infinite combo that wins you the game right away. We also got Tajik Legion's Edge, which is a pretty exciting Boros threat. So three mana, you get a three two with haste and mentor. You prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control, and you can pay two to give it first strike. So this card kind of reminds me of Captain Lannery Storm. Hasty, legendary, three drop, hits for two with Lannery Storm, you get a sack the treasure with additional upsides. And this card can be very scary in a Boros deck. One card that actually has a lot of potential in Boros moving forward, I think, is Path to Metal, which is a very strong enchantment, but it needs you to have certain mechanics on your creatures. First Strike, Double Strike, Vigilance, or Haste. Tajik works perfectly in that deck. Play a one drop with one of those mechanics, followed up with Path to Metal into Tajik. You can flip your Path to Metal very quickly, and Tajik fits right on curve with that. Plus, you can just play it in some sort of Mentor-style deck where you're playing Rigging Runner, maybe, on turn one into Sunhome, Star Ward, or some other two drop. Tajik comes down, immediately mentors, putting a counter on your Rigging Runner or your Sunhome.
Kingdom Stalwart. Then you could top it off with Aurelia, Exemplar of Justice. So I think there's a pretty reasonable chance that Tajik can be a standard playable three drop. Obviously, being legendary probably means it's more of like a two of or something, but that's fine. You already have Legion War Boss in the three drop slot, so you probably don't need the full four copies of Tajik. But when this comes down and immediately mentors something, you're getting a great deal. You're essentially attacking with four hasty power with your three drop, and then you have additional upsides on top of that. We also got some interesting lower rarity stuff. Bolt Separator is probably the most interesting in the bunch. Basically, a mini version of Zada. If you target Bolt Separator with an instant or sorcery, you can copy that to target one other creature. So Zada does it for everything, but Bolt Separator is a lot cheaper. The thing is, I'm not really sure what you do with this in standard. I looked through, and there's not a lot of obvious on-color ways to start the copying. I guess you could, like, aggressive urge, double pump, draw two cards, Ryle, Gift of Growth for extra pumping, but I didn't see any obvious combos with Bolt Separator doubling up the spell. So if you have some ideas of how to break Bolt Separator in standard, let me know, but definitely a super fun effect, and it's on a wizard, which is nice because wizards is a supported theme, so we'll see if Bolt Separator can do anything. Regardless, a fun, kind of casual build around card that we might see show up in janky against the odd style decks. Otherwise, we got a bunch of stuff that that's really only relevant for limited and the lower rarities. Of the cards that are comments and uncommons, Hazard Marshall doesn't look that bad. A one mana one one that when it attacks with at least two other creatures, you get a one one with lifelink. Problem is, Goblet Shade Whirler kind of punishes one ones pretty hard, but maybe it could show up in a token style deck. Electrostatic Field is kind of another payoff for the Spell Slinger deck. One damage is not that much, but a zero four blocker, not the worst for two mana. Otherwise, Equinox of the Conclave, a big flyer with Convoke. Rhythm Lurcher is a card I'm kind of interested in in Pauper. There are decks like Tormented Existence that want to really stock their graveyard. If you can play this as a one of and just stock your graveyard with a bunch of creatures, eventually Tortured Existence it back, cast this, make it a huge like 7-7 seven, seven, or 8-8, eight, eight. that's a pretty big set in the Pauper format. Otherwise, Flower Flourish, a fine limited way to fix your mana in a Selesnia deck. Urswell Troopers, uh, it's a discard outlet, probably good in limited, has a little bit of like Putrid Leech in it, but you have to discard cards to really do it, but it could be very good and limited, especially if you want cards in your graveyard. And those have been our daily Gills of Ravnica spoilers for today. So let me know what you think in the comments. What do you want to do with Mnemonic Betrayal? What about Experimental Frenzy? What other combos are that for that card? How about Atara the Silencer? Is there a way to kill three creatures with it and win the game? Citywide Burst, what kind of deck can use that as a sweeper? Is Charnel Troll worth it, even with the drawback of getting blown out by Graveyard Hate? Are any of the other cards, Risk Factor, Light of Legion, the cards we were kind of meh about, can they show up in Constructed? What about Tajik? Where does that fit in that Boros puzzle, all the lower rarity stuff, what combos are there for Bolt Separator? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.